Welcome back, everybody. This is week number two of the European Qualifier for the Quake World Championship. And our next match is just about to be underway. It's going to be uh, Rainier versus Proximo. Now, Proximo is a player to watch out for this week. We'll see how this guy does, but we're really excited to see his gameplay. Week number two, I mean, it's definitely not first things first, but we're well underway at this point. We're seeing what players are dangerous, what maps to look out for, what champions are becoming really popular, and we'll just see if the uh, the champion compositions stay consistent in this next match. I mean, we can hope so, but at the same time, it's always nice to see uh, a little bit more peculiar picks, perhaps, or even like overall compositions, because like I said, we, we, we see almost every champion, every broadcast at some point, but you know, the, the heavy favourites, the Anarchies, the Knicks, the Rangers, well, we did the just see we did just see Anarchy. But at the same time, you know, at, at the same time, Scalebearer, very popular, Sawlag, very popular. There is more than three champions we see all the time, so I think that really does open up the 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 concept of just different games, right? Different matches every time, and you know, certain players favoring certain champions, sort of, you know, feeling that sort of like uh, loyalty to them, I suppose. But at the same time, you know, how many people have we seen completely swap up their roster completely from start to finish and still do well? Like for example, Cipher, we see Cipher pick a different three almost every single time we see him play, and there are a few other players that do the same kind of thing. Because if you can play the board as well as all the maps well, you're kind of making yourself uncounterable and ready for every situation you could possibly be ready for. So anyone at home, maybe wondering what's going on here. This is the Quake World Championship qualification process. Every Thursday, a dual tournament will uh, take place. And this is obviously week number two of that. There are going to be four dual tournaments in total. And every single one of those weeks will play through to a Sunday playoff. Now, the Sunday playoff will determine who makes it to the EU regionals. Bear in mind, this is going on in NA as well. This is just the European portion. But the playoffs will determine who makes it into the regionals. And the regionals will determine who makes it into the Quake World Championship finals live at QuakeCon later this year. But the thing is, a lot of these players, they've been to QuakeCon loads of times. This is a setting they're very familiar well, with. Well, even case in point, they're going to have an edge. Let's look at some of the players that we've already got confirmed for the regional finals at the very least. You know, Zron is here, Noctis, uh, Neutrino, Agent, Cypher, Claws, Cooler, Vu. A lot of these guys, very familiar, famous names within Quake. They've seen their fair share of competitive situations, be it online, be it at land. They're ready for whatever basically gets thrown at them, especially for multiple game modes too. A lot of these guys will be seeing already qualified for the finals um, or the regionals, I should say, in Sacrifice as well. Let's not forget some of these guys do both game modes and they're very competent. Well, pretty both. much everyone, actually, I, as far as I'm aware, almost every single top player we have here were on the Sacrifice teams that we saw on the same tournament. We saw the Saturday broadcast last week of which we were seeing basically everyone play. Obviously, not all of those teams made it, but the teams that qualified for regionals, you know, consistently we were seeing players that made it in both Duel and Sacrifice in week number Number one, which I think sets a really strong precedent for just who are the most dominant players in the scene right now, which are some of these guys that have already made it across both game modes. But on the flip side, the opponents that fell ever so slightly short are going to be here this week. Obviously, you know, Proximo, as I said earlier on, is a player to look out for, so he's going to be, no doubt, give us a really good demonstration right here. Thing or two about Quake Champions, I think. But to be honest, last week when we saw the playoffs, there were a lot of two zeros, but I don't think just how close those maps went is like an accurate representation I'd of say that's the set. Fair enough. Because it was 2-0, yeah, but they by no means, absolutely most of those sets were close. They were 2-0, but they were close on the map specifically. But today, the sets are being quite fast. And this actually seemed to reign true quite a lot last week as well. The earlier round, like the earlier in the bracket we were, the more aggressive, some of the more well-known players and some of the more, you know, I suppose, very talented Quake players overall. They were being very aggressive early on. But as soon as they found themselves against opponents that really, like, tested their ability, they'd slow it down a lot. And let's not forget, I believe it was, um, was it uh, Faz versus Vu? I believe we saw, and it was um, that, that was that's yeah, yeah. Anarchy Mirror on, on on ruins, and that came down to an absolute snail's pace because they just slowed it down and were like, okay, this is how we're going to play it. You're going to get me low, and I'm just going to run away, and vice versa. To the point that I actually ended up winning the set because of it. So it can definitely work in in both ways. And I just want to see if we're going to continue to see the, the fast sets like we've seen today, or whether it's just going to continue to get sort of more passive as the day goes on. Well, bear in mind this is an open bracket tournament, right? In the sense that we've had over 500 people sign up for this week's tournament, which is still a massive bracket. A lot of these players may not have played in a bracket this big, if not before, for a very, very long time. I know actually uh, the last week we had with 700 people, we were seeing a lot of reoccurring comments of saying this is the biggest Quake tournament in years. You know, 700 people is a humongous number. Bear in mind, it's one versus one as well. That's 700 individual players. That's not, you know, people that are just part of teams. That's not total. stretched out over teams. That's just individual players have all signed up. 1v1 cups, 500 people. And let's not forget, this is week two of four. If these guys do lose today, 
plenty of time. Obviously, that's going to happen. You know, one must win, one must lose. That's just the nature of competition. You can come back next week. You can come back the week after that. You can attempt every single Draft. weekend to try and qualify. But Corrupted Keep will be the first one this time between Rainier and Proximo. So let's have a look at what they pick. Proximo has that Dire Orb logo, so I'm expecting a Ranger at some point, if that's his boy. But Scalebearer first on Corrupted Keep. I mean, we have seen how dangerous Scalebearer is on this map. Indeed, I mean, right, you just don't have the space to move around. He gets his ball rush around to get where he wants to be. A short call done on it too. Looks like Ooh. both of them are actually opting to go for it. And Galena, that's a nice pick. Yeah, we've definitely seen Galena put in some work. Neutrino versus Cooler in the 125 FPS in particular. I mean, I will never stop thinking about that moment. Rocket knocked straight into a totem and I turned to I, paste on landing. I think that's already become like one of almost the, like the, the staple moments. It was just really map. sick. It was just really good. I liked it very much. But two scale bearers. I mean, sometimes it's scale bearer, but you very rarely see both teams go with it. Seeing two scale bearers well, in a um, mirror on this map would be kind of interesting, I think. I think, I mean, scale bearer already, you know, can get to almost anywhere he wants to get to with that charge. You can charge. Sort of, if, if they if they go for the rush, you go for the rush. You sort of chase them down, perhaps. But Galena on this map, Galena is one of those champions that we see. She can her, her, basically her role completely changes based on what the game uh, what game mode you're playing. In. Yeah, dual so, aggressive sacrifice defense. Yeah, a, a dual we see you know area denial aggression. 1v1 potential for either burst or just topping yourself up in a fight and then sacrifice it became that almost like complete heal stations right or you'd put it in areas that the, the soul runner might try and run away and you can sort of head them off that way but in duel specifically on a small map like corrupted keep even though it's quite easy to shoot the uh, the totems on site there are so Three, many tricky corners two, and sort of uh, areas you will like well fight. you always see the, the teleporters right you know they are very prominent on this map now proximo going for that chunky start going with scale bearer immediately and he's definitely caught sight of the fact that the dire orb has been used up so now he's got a rocket launcher he's got all that health i do expect proximo to be quite aggressive trying to head him off catch aside him still plenty of health left to work with with 108 he can tank another rocket but looking to be a little bit safe get that health back get some of the armor back become dangerous for later Rainier as well health versus armor both about to respawn the question is who's going to take this first blood who's going to set the pace for how this round is going to be played it's a ranger versus scale bearer matchup you don't see tend to see this quite often but ranger well, being quite a popular character himself. Have a look at this team comp, right? Where you've got Scaleberry yet to be picked by Rainev. On the flip side, Proximo yet to go in for that. That's going to pick as well. Is he going to teleport? No! Good mind games there. But actually quite bold. Proximo didn't turn around. He was confident that Rainev was not going to teleport to that die roll. Predictive rush. Is he going to try and catch him? Not quite. I think, you, if anything, just wanted to get as close to the heavy armor as possible. We see Scaleberries do that quite a lot, using that ability just to secure these big power-ups. Oh, oh. Catching him with the uh, lightning gun. Not doing a massive amount of damage, but oh, the machine gun will add to it, though. Well, that's the one element of Corrupted Keep. The heavy machine gun really does take that almost railgun-style role, in that it's a high-damage weapon that has hit-scan from range, far distance. But it, yeah, I mean, basically, right, yeah, right, normally right you see people uh, swap to the rail straight away there, but the machine gun is the option now. All the rockets going through a die roll. Is he going to teleport? No, he doesn't. And Rainer goes down. Proximo with that comfortable first frag and both pickups seconds away from respawning. Going in with the charge. Is he going to catch him off guard? Heads him off. No, not quite. A little bit too far away. But that scale bearer mirror. However, Proximo with just way more health to work with. He's looking a little bit more dangerous in this mirror match at the moment. Oh, he was waiting for him. There's that charge, that 1v1, just that guaranteed burst adding to it. And Reyna is able to pick that one up. That's just one of the uses of that ball rush charge in that 1v1 situation, just using it for that instant burst, point blank. Proximo wastes no time going in for that blast of its pick, though, because it's the shred, shredding this champion down as much as possible. I mean, two rockets, two rails, not two rails, sorry, two lightning guns on this map. We've seen how much health gets taken down already well, by like that clutch. She's got the barrier to stop it. It's like Sorlag, who has the bunny hop to just speed away as fast as she can. It's a scale barrier, but he doesn't have that rush. He's not going anywhere. Speaking of the rush. Aggressively, is it oh, no, he misses. misses. Uh oh, this is a bad situation for him to be in. The double wield is popped, and Proximo is going to take that kill upon seeing that charge miss, and he's going to clean it up. I think Galena that is now. Just a, by herself. I think that was a really nice reaction. Going in for Slurp, actually, and the Totem didn't really have a chance to do anything. That was a fantastic spawn for Proximo, just catching Galena Prepare almost immediately. Fight. Trying to deny the area with the Totem, but just didn't get a chance to do anything. But that, that reaction, Round the second he saw the ball rush miss, Three, and he knows now that two, Scalebearer has no one. escape options, Round that two, is when Proximo fight. went in for the kill.
Indeed, but once again, a good respawn though for Proximo. Able to get himself the heavy machine gun and the mega health straight away. So we can see it. Oh no, there we go. He's going oh, for the fight. No. And double wield. He's alive. He is still alive. <laughs> I was about to say, where even is his health? On that spectator right there. Already forced onto scale barrier. I think it's the first like... time I literally haven't seen a shred of blue, yet he survives. Oh, but he's caught on the teleport. That's quite an early spawn. Is he going to try and punish this? It's going to be kind of hard for him he to get away. He does have have some weapon. I was about to say, it was going to be kind of difficult to get away, but he was able to sort of like evade him a little bit, but heading him off immediately with the rocket takes reduced damage because the ball rush does sort of limit the damage you take in the middle of that animation. Yeah, straight but... up halves how much damage you take can be useful, especially against something like a rocket launcher. But this time, Proximo caught up here instead, but... And that's really well played by Rayner, just staying outside of that LG range, establishing that sort of distance and keeping him stuck there. Look at how much damage Proximo's taken. I know Rayner took some as well, but I feel like that was well played. Heavy Armour going to be up in a few seconds though. Doesn't look like Proximo quite has the timings on it, but you can see he's there waiting. Heavy Armour is picked up, uh -oh. he's going to take this fight. He's getting aggressive, there's the charge! Oh, oh it misses missed. again! No, that's so unfortunate! If only the charge collided, Proximo no doubt would have died. But hang on, he's caught Galena on a spawn again. Right behind it going with Duel Galena. Bear in mind, no passive or ability to act as mobility tools. She's kind of free to this damage. Unless she can duck like right there, but look how much he's just keeping her controlled. Going in for the cheeky little armor, but either way, that was two for two. A spawn that Rainier does not want with Galena at all. It was unfortunate though, he's going to try and tag him down. Heavy armor again is picked up, but didn't save him last time. I wonder if in this round we saw the Blaskovitz picked first, because he almost predicted Rainier to go in for scale bearer. Oh! oh that's Rainier is able to take this though with that rocket launcher. Elf's coming up too, the totem there also. So if he can really start to keep this momentum going, maybe he can take this round in return, but a bit of a comeback on the cards as Proxima now top goes. Ranger, all oh, gets caught, that could be a kill. He's a big damage and takes Proxima out again, down to the final champion, which is going to be Scalebearer, but if Rainier catches him early before he can stack, and before he can get important weapons, he might be all right. Wasn't quite caught, there we go, the totem goes down on the Mega Health, just trying to stop Proxima from picking that up. I actually really like the token placement down by the Mega as well, because if you get caught in a bad situation, you can actually heal yourself up by trying to do it. Going in with a charge, misses it. A nice dodge as well, forcing him to get rid of that. But a difference there, though. Like, well, when Proximo saw that he missed the charge, he actually oh, he's ran a big away trouble. from the fight. He could die here. No, he misses the rocket. Heavy armor comes through, tries to stop him, doesn't jump down. Proximo's still alive. The totem saved his life. The totem saved him. Proximo is so weak. A super shotgun from even really close will do it. Does he get it? Yes! Oh, oh my god, he has turned into blue goo as Rainer is going to take that round in return for a full fight. three champion comeback. That totem saved him. I mean, like, if you can put a totem down and stand on it, I mean, it heals you for 50, right? So if it heals you for 50 and you stand on heavy armor, you've just got basically round 100 three. armor, 50 health. He was almost dead. He could not have afforded to take a single rocket after that, but it was just such an amazing job of just giving him back to almost full health immediately. And that saved him. All Proximo as well, though, he was taking all up his alley, but Reina, that one character comeback. Reina proving too strong. That's a really good rocket. Hang on, Proximo in a bad situation. Doesn't quite get the midair, so he's still in danger. Proximo trying to fend him away with the dual wield. And he did manage to survive that exchange. It looks like trading mega health for heavy armor. We see that quite often, just conceding it. Obviously, you can't be at both at once unless you're a ranger and have that die orb thrown in a certain way. I don't know if you can do that on this map, though. Both players playing a very sort of slow game. Trying to really listen out for the other guy is. However, definitely caught sight of him. Rayner using that die roll to try and switch sides a little bit unpredictably. He does manage to get a good rocket. However, can it survive? No! Proximo with the dual wield. Takes him out immediately and gets heavy armor. It's almost deceiving, right? Just how much damage this champion can output. Oh, catch him on the spawn. He does have the rush. Is he going to need to use it, though? He has taken so much damage. Wow. And, yeah, deleted. Proximo with a much better start. Once again, though, Galena by herself, but we've already seen it happen, that full comeback. She has to do it again. She has deceiving comeback potential. I mean, normally you do see these champions. One of the things that doesn't hold Galena back as such, um, because the terms are fantastic, but she hasn't got a passive that gives her movement. She hasn't got an ability that gives her movement. It's all about damage or healing, and that's it. But it's just the sheer level of sustainability she has. It's what's been keeping her alive throughout this entire match. 
all the rockets gonna track her down. Not quite gonna connect though, Rainer. Oh, oh there's that door. No. Is this gonna be death? I don't think she can get away from this, and that is gonna be a clean round. Proximo, but like, like you said, right, she doesn't have those mobility options. Her passive isn't movement, her ability is movement. Fight. If you can catch her out and you have that damage on deck, she will just annihilate. Round well, Blaskovitz in particular, actually, I think three, is a really good answer two, to her because it's not one, so easy for her to get away fight. from his dual wield. I mean, even if she puts a totem down, she really, it's gonna be rare for her to like almost sustain that because he does so much damage. Got the LG early. Definitely what Proximo wants. That key weapon to just turn the tide. Old Dyrob didn't get a full damage though. Yeah, it takes minimal damage in that exchange. Top to back up, full health, full armor. He's ready to brawl. Oh, he catches Ram out. There we go. There's a oh. dual wield. And because he used the Dire Orb before, even though it has a short cooldown, not short enough to get him out of that situation. He knows that Rain is likely to go for this rocket launcher. And he does make the read. And he steals the rocket launcher right from under his nose. He doesn't have the weapons to fight. Yet here he is trying to do it anyway. And Proximo tracks him down with that LG. Steals his weapon away. Chases him down. Does not let him live. And he is dead. Now that's going to be really important for Rainer actually. The fact that the totem got deleted. It actually has shown him where Proximo is on the map. However, again, Mega Health and Heavy Armor both spawning at the same time. We're going to probably see a trade here. Yep. That's exactly what we saw. Arena is likely to have a rocket launcher by now. Bear in mind though, Proximo with a super, super healthy Blaskovitz versus a Galena, who, bear in mind, she's stacked, yes, but he's got that dual wield. Again, if he catches her off guard, we will see a frag go immediately. Rainer's going to have to be so careful to make I mean, sure we've he does not get We've already seen caught. this one Galena comeback, but I mean, trying to have to do the same thing for three rounds in a row. Going in for the air tower, but it's not going to work. Tries to use it aggressively, but even if it hit Proximo, he was going to survive it and no doubt continue that dual wield. So after a couple of really good rounds, Proximo does manage to take the map anyway, and now he is up by one map. Indeed he is. Corrupted Keep is, well, was the first map now, so we're not going to see that again. Uh, well, most likely not anyway. So um, what do you think we're going to be seeing from Rainier now? I think it depends on his uh, team composition, right? Like, you know, was Galena picked just because they were on Corrupted Keep? That That's one question you have to ask yourself. Or, if he does like to play Galena, is he going to try and pick a map that Galena f is favourable on as well? Is he going to try and pick Blood Run? I mean, we we've actually seen Galena on Blood Run, we've seen her on Ruins, and we've actually seen her a few times on Corrupted Keep. So it's definitely not the first time I've seen her there. I think it's just, when you play her, you have to have like, a very specific idea of where you want to be focusing on with her. Because, like, let's not forget, the comeback we saw with her was off really well-placed totems, just good accuracy in the fight, but as long as the game went on, the more aggressive Proximo seemed to be getting and the more comfortable he was just seizing those frags, even though she had the totems ready. Well, because Blaskovitz's ability is just built to get frags and get them as fast as possible. Live to frag. I feel like that's like I feel like that that's the game plan you almost expect. When you see a Blaskovitz picked first as well, I think that's just the gameplay you have to be ready for. Because I mean that that's a, a rush down player style when you pick that champion because how much damage it does. We'll say though, um, right as we, we talk about how, you know, from last week to today, we see an Anarchy slash Nyx on every team, you know, one or the other, or if not both. We didn't see Anarchy or Nyx on either team in that entire That was match. a bit of a first, really. I don't think we've actually seen that before. It's almost always been one or the other, or sometimes both. But Blood Run. Blood Run, that is the map. Now, do we see Galena get picked again because he's gone for Blood Run? Or is it just a map thing he's after? Goes in for Ranger. Now, Proximo going in with the Nyx. Question is, who's he going to be replacing with that Nyx? So we saw his Baskovich do so much damage before. Now we see Visor. Could it be the Scale Bearer getting swapped out for that Ranger? We'll see what happens. Ah, going in for Nyx himself, going a little bit more traditional, and actually oh. a complete mirror match across all three champions, Visor, Ranger, and Nyx together. That's interesting. Scale Bearer um, was on both teams before, now not on either of them. And like you say, right, just uh, we don't see this every time when it's just a straight up the three champions they're using the same team. But that's what I mean, though. Just because they've picked the same three does not mean this will just be a straight up mirror between them because you get to choose a completely different order. You know, I mean, one of them could be more confident starting with Visor than one perhaps Nyx. So even though they've got the same lineup, this is still going to be 
a fairly different match, I should think. Well, I think the likely guess is to assume that we're going to see Nyx first on both sides because Nyx first is a very, very pro uh, popular strategy. However, on the flip side of that, I think when you, when you take into account uh, Visor If you know they're starting Ranger, with Nyx, do you start with Visor to try and counter that? That's the element, isn't it? In that Nyx's Ghost Walk is such an amazing tool, but Visor does directly counter that. I mean, it's not going to be a you know a sort of free win card. It's not that I pop my ability and you're dead for free because sometimes you have to factor in It's just more options weapons. than other champions might Round have. That's what it really boils down to. Three, well, here we go. Two, Proximo one, is currently up one map. One, Blood Run. Rainer would have been selecting that one. But Rainer going in with Ranger first, but Proximo going in with Nyx first. Definitely a traditional champion to pick first at the start of a match. She becomes a lot more dangerous once she gets access to the rocket, though, because that's definitely the weapon that we see. Speaking of weapons, though, the rail is now back onto play. We're not on Corrupt to keep anymore, so now we're going to go back to this rail. Yeah, on the first shot with it. Yeah. Let's connect. Rainer just forced to get away from that. Doesn't want to take any more of those. And the important thing here, actually, is that he's denied that rocket launcher. So if you deny that rocket launcher, you don't allow them to sort of pepper it on the uh, mega health. But again, using it aggressively. Are we going to see an LG or another rail? Oh, oh tries he to get ready it. to react, but he ever so slightly missed. The heavy other goes in. Is he getting chased? Oh no, from under there. Rainer trying to get him from below. Misses a lot of rails right here. Actually, when he came out of the uh, Ghost Walk, I was almost expecting him to go for the LG because he just needed a little bit of health left. But right now, he's missed a lot of rails. Rainer punishing Proximo. I think there was a little bit of sloppiness when it comes from missing those rails. Every single one of them would have been so pivotal if he just landed it. Indeed, but there we go. Rainer was just that one step more accurate when it really boiled down to it. Now Proximo goes straight in for the Rangers. Now we're going to see them go off with the same champion for a little while. But we can see that he's down there at the bottom. Just maybe, maybe just trying to catch him. Yeah, yeah he's, he's trying to base with the heavy armor. He is waiting for that armor to get taken. Each rail in the process, but he's taken all of the armor now, so I don't think he cares too much. And again, these rails are missing over and over. Rainer's super stacked. Proximo taking more rails. Snap. The aggressive dire orb, trying to head him off. Catch him up, oh, get another rail. Really clean play, and Rainer's Ranger so far putting in work. Indeed, he's just being more accurate when it boils down to it. But Proximo over here, I think, I believe he's just popped his piercing sight. So he's going to know where Rain is at. Yeah, using Rain here heard it. So we're peppering these rockets just to stop him from getting close enough safely. Using piercing sight early, I think, is just a means to try and not get killed on spawn immediately. Just try and get away safely without running into someone accidentally. To be fair, that's actually something we saw Proximo do himself quite a lot. So he's going to understand the importance of doing that. We've already seen one champion come back, though. So don't count Proximo out. He's starting to take a lot of damage here. If he gets hit by oh. that rail, no, the rail misses. Back to back, both players. And the final rail comes out from Rainier again. Now, going to be honest, I think the rail inclusion has definitely helped a lot. It's definitely changed things completely, I think, because um, it, it does seem to be right. I mean, obviously, it could just be a bad round for him, but Rainier does look a little bit more comfortable on the rails themselves. And it being such a significant round weapon, two. especially against some of these champions, especially that Nyx, you do need to make sure you've, you're, you're making the shots count. Yeah, he's definitely not going to teleport that die orb now. He knows Proximo collected the Mega. Would have been a bit suicidal, I think. This time, though, Proximo more on the money with the rails, but one hit. P. Rainer, if he can get one hit, yes, we need, but misses it. And Proximo gets that final tick of Lightning Gun. That rail would have been amazing if he hit it. As the tides turn, right as Rainer needs a clutch rail to survive, he misses it, and Proximo is able to take it away. Oh, and again, so slightly missed. Both players last minute really forced to use that ghost walk. Yeah, I don't blame him at all. But probably yeah, we're gonna trade it. Trade. There's that real oh. rocket and rain here with the reed. Just knows he's gonna be there. I mean, it was like oh, right. oh, spawn. What? Spawn. Misses the back to back. 25 seconds on that piercing sight. So Proximo kind of free to run away. A little bit less risky. We'll see what happens. He picked up weapons, so he's got the rocket, but no, Proximo goes down. Rainer, the railgun making all the difference in the world in this map. Yeah, 100%. He's going to hear that piercing sight. He now knows he's been spotted. I wonder if he actually cares too much, though. Oh, he's going in for the kill. Yeah. He has piercing sight. His escape option is going to be quite limited. Going in for the jump, expecting the rocket. Gets another one. Can he finish it, though? He's done minimal damage. The 57 is going to do it, but no, still alive. At the last minute, Proximo goes down, and I feel like this turnaround has been absolutely superb for Reyna. Two very swift rounds as well. They were very quick. Oh, it just comes down to the accuracy, but it looks like the longer we go on here, Rainer is getting a little bit more brave, a little bit more confident. It's just going in. I mean, right at the end there, right? He popped his piercing sight just to make sure he couldn't escape, and then he just chased it down. 
Always had him off, forcing out the Ghost Walk. Now, Proximo did manage to get the heavy armor, but he goes and trades out for the Mega Health and again deleted. This is a great round for Reyna so far. Was attempting the Super Shotgun though, so if Proximo just got one more shot, that could have been all the difference. But Reyna once again is going to prevail. And this Ranger makes himself one champion up already. Proximo back to the wall. He could get just completely swept three rounds straight. Potentially. I mean, bear in mind, Blood Run was picked by Reyna. This was his map choice. You can see why. Clearly a map he's comfortable with, but the reaction. Proximo ready, lying in wait, reacting to the teleport of that Dire Orb. And, and again, a really good respawn though from Proximo. We're seeing a lot of players just sort of sit there and wait, and if they catch that spawn, it's almost like a free rail every time. Especially when they don't spawn with the weapons, and he's going to get taken down. Proximo starting this comeback. If he can take out this next, he'll put a round on the board. That might be one round away from tying things up already. Let's not forget Proximo is in the lead. This would have been a map that was chosen by Rainier. Looking, I mean, this must be why he picked it, right? He seems very confident on it. Now there's going to be another fight near the Mega, and they trade out, but... That was definitely a trade in favor of Proximo because he had that champion advantage. And now I think that's just a momentum round. He needed that one. And we might see a three-round sweep. We'll see. He's going to have to do it. Otherwise, we're going to be tied up one apiece. I mean, to be fair, it would give... I do believe we don't have the you know, the, the, the one one map per set rule. So we would be able to have the option to see Corrupted Keep again. But you know, Proximo doesn't want to necessarily bring it to that. He wants to end this now and make it a 2-0. Either way, Proximo going with Nyx first again. Very traditional. Rainer. Oh, the Ghost Walk is popped early. And Rainer wants nothing to do with it. He's just popping away just in case we see it used aggressively. We see that quite often, though, from Nyx players. Using that Ghost Walk to almost assassinate, to get really close. There's that quick snap to rail. That was Rainer. Wow. Really, really nice reaction on that rail. Fantastic shot. Just really sort of denying with the rocket. Trying to take the heavy armor safely. And bear in mind, yeah, Proximo is nowhere near close enough. In this stage, Rainer is definitely in... A little bit more dangerous. He's got so much more armor to work with. Quite far away away from each other, though. So it could be quite a while before we see a skirmish. Or oh, we can hear it. Yeah, he's heard it. Can he hear it behind? He's trying to get a read on where she is. Can hear those footsteps. Just trying to figure out where they're coming from. Yeah, he knows he's underground now. He's going to take that heavy oh, armor. read. Catches this follow-up. Lightning gun damage really starting to add up. The Ghost Walk is popped again. Oh, and he's used it aggressively. He sees him reappear. He knows he can go in. He's going in for the chase. Does get Proximo. And that teleport to Dire Orb was such a nice, almost like insurance policy. If he stays there, I can teleport. If he's attacked me, I can just shoot him anyway. Covering almost two distances at once. The strength of Ranger on a map like this. Oh, probably to not it. Proximo able to secure the Mega Health. Definitely needed to do that as well. Then again, they're going to trade it again, but he catches him off guard. 20 HP is not much, but again, misses the rail. Proximo with the misses again. Almost kind of ret returning to haunt him, I think. Indeed, but once again, I mean, both these guys really sort of resetting it back. It's really slow, cautious in between. Relatively even health. Even Proximo did just collect the regular armor. Oh, oh that's that's direct from that range. Oh, wow. He's got one HP as well. Rainier, this is such a fantastic map for him. He has consistently survived with a slither and just knows how to stay alive. The fights have been so good for him. All he has to do now is take out Visor, and he is going to tie up 1-1. One, one, and Proximo will then have the option to choose map. But you know Proximo, he's not going to let it come to that. He wants to close things out. He wants that 2-0. But it's much harder for him this time. Absolutely. I mean, that one champion buys a comeback. What well, character we see do it too often? It's that rail. Oh, it's more dangerous. Oh, uh, direct. Proximo able to make that die roll not quite connect. So he has a little bit of a lifeline here. Heavy armor going to get it, but very low on health. And there's the piercing sight. He knows where he is. And he knows he's going to be weak as well. Yes, he's got the heavy armor, but he's not going to be up to full just yet. Mega health up soon, though. So if Proximo can start to control this. Oh, misses the rail. That could be huge. Bear in mind, though, you definitely can't count Proximo out. Plenty of rockets, plenty of that lightning gun, plenty of rails. Yeah, we do see comebacks all the time. There's a rocket, no, it doesn't connect. Nail gun doing so much damage, and oh! there we go, the prediction rocket now. Just like that, evens things up in what could be the final round. But Proximo wants to take this one and bring it back to an even playing field. Proximo used that piercing sight, knowing exactly where Rain is going to respawn now. If he can catch him early on, it's going to be fantastic for him. One of the strengths of Visor to really bully someone the second they spawn, because he knows exactly where they are. 
Mega health coming up, there's the aggression. Gets tagged by rail, but then gets the mega health. But again, a bit not wanting to push in too hard. He just took a big rocket right there. No wonder he's retreating. Oh, heavy armor's up. Now we're gonna see there's the fight. Oh, that rail! Brain is missing it. Oh, he misses, that could be clutch! I think he's actually trying to stay. I think he's expecting Rainer to maybe go in for the armor. He makes the risk, takes the risk, takes loads of damage. He's only on six. Quite risky actually going in for that heavy armor. Rainer okay, just stayed and seconds, waited. Though. He gets it. Oh, but no, Rainer wasn't there to sort of challenge him. So he goes from no health whatsoever to pretty much full again. Yeah, I mean, he's lost all of his armor, but Proximo surviving. I, it's so close at that heavy armor exchange. I was so surprised to see Proximo fight for it, but he did get it and it's paid off. I mean, he was very low. That was a bit of a, um, an all-in play there, but just that. 30 seconds away from overtime. Not just going to really matter too much when there's one kill in it anyway. Uh -oh. oh, he goes for oh, a lightning gun no. tracking. Oh, oh, and the miss, the rail. That could have been everything to end the game. Or the oh, round, I should say. The invisibility to just go straight through that rail at the last minute. But he got such a good read. He knew Rainier was going to take it. And when he did gap, he managed to grab it. It wasn't enough to finish the job. And now he's been caught off guard. And there we go. Proximo gets another rocket. And it's two rounds a each. Full comeback with Visor of all champions. Wonderfully played. This could be the final round, Mustard. It could be. I mean, Proxno's worked hard for it. I mean, those first two rounds were very convincing, but he's just dragging this match, kicking and screaming back into his favor. Immediately going actually for the prediction. Very brave play by Proxmo. Oh, not going in the rockets, but the rail is going to be good. I think it's actually quite a very bold decision to go straight for the heavy armor read and then get the mega health later. I think he opted to go for the early damage rather than trying to waste that half a second getting the mega health and letting him get away. But again, Nyx versus Ranger. Ranger's definitely going to have the cooldown advantage here. I believe it's like 40 seconds or so for the Ghost Walk and 20 for Dyrol. Pretty much exactly half. Both heavy armor and mega health coming up at the same time. The armor goes towards all oh, that rail though to turn it back. But walks straight back into the mega health, so still alive. Actually teleports to it. Takes a big rail right there. Proximo, the important thing is that he himself has not been hit just yet. Still, nice amount of health. Does get armor on deck too. These light champions getting armor is so important. Making sure they don't get wiped out by a single rail. Oh, ghost walk. Yeah, maybe using it aggressively. But but maybe he just tried to catch him out somewhere, but unfortunately for him, Rainer was nowhere to be seen. Here comes the heavy armor, but we've seen the damage. Almost trying to bait some rockets. Gets it anyway, but takes not a huge amount of damage, to be honest. 40 and then 19. Definitely could have been more. Well, especially considering how fast these guys have seen they can top themselves up. They know where those armor pickups are. They know where the nearest health is. Oh, that. <laughs> wow. You look at it just like that, how fast that health can disappear if those rails are good. Rainier's rails have been on point, but it's not been enough to finish it. I think that's that's the overarching problem he's had. Up right. for five Wait, seconds. That, that, could that's, be dangerous. that's gone for five seconds. He's having to sit here, but sitting in the corner. Hasn't caught five of him. Rainier does not know he's there, but at the last minute does find out. I think Proximo sitting by that heavy armor was a bit of a mistake. Five seconds is a long time to wait. Let's get there, Proximo. We've seen him do the comeback. We know he doesn't want to put that. Oh, mid-air! Make it that hard for himself this early on. Knows that he's done a ton of damage. Oh, he caught him. He's going to head him off. Really looking to meet him in front. Gets the lightning gun. Can he close this one out? Goes in for the die roll. Doesn't teleport towards it. Being aggressive, but gets Proximo anyway. And now that's a lot of health left. And he's going to get heavy armor. If he gets a good spawn on Proximo, bear in mind he's going to have piercing sight. He's going to be able to try and almost evade Both while he of stacks. These guys are just forcing their opponent to make these really tough comebacks round after round. But he's not going to let him this time. And we go into a third map. That was very almost. Almost, almost a complete three round comeback. It would have been superb, but at that last minute, just getting that really early frag in that exchange, um, I just think he did a good job of staying alive. You know, sometimes when the opponent's on the verge of making a three round comeback, that final round can be a bit tilting. You know, you can almost be like, oh God, how have I let this like slip well, through my he's, fingers? He's going to know that he's, he's, he's bought himself a lifeline. He has managed to take it to map three. Um, but like you said, right, we saw that uh, Proxim was so close to making that full three round comeback that, you know, right now, the fact that he came so close yet so far to sort of clutching That's that the one worst. back, he is now forced to play another map from f the start, you know, from scratch. And like you said, that can be tilting sometimes. Just has he, is he going to be able to compose himself back to normal? Now it's just zero, zero again. Well, I feel like it's going to be, you know, by just default, when we change the map, it's going to go back to default anyway, because it's a, it's a fresh new map, fresh new... Well, you know, it's an opportunity to 
play the map a bit differently because Corrupted Keep, definitely in the favor of Proximo, 100,000%. It looked like the Blood Run pick was like a sweep, three straight rounds, but we started to see that potential comeback. So there's a lot of, like, there was a level of adaptation there from both players, but it was clearly just a map that, you know, they were clearly ready for, both players. So do you think almost we might map, see Proximo take it back to Corrupted Keep? Well, I think it depends. Um, we'll really see what he does, but we've already seen that when the maps change, the champions change. It's not that they have like a designated team, which we do see some people go with. So I think talking about potential champion select uh, is going to be entirely dictated by the map that we see. If we go on to Blood Covenant, which I think we might do, be doing Blood Covenant here. Um, I did actually catch sight of the text, but I didn't quite read the whole thing. But either way, if we see a Blood Covenant pick, I'm almost expecting to see Nyx on every team 100%. I mean, even Visor, right? We might see Visor return. Visor being quite oh, popular on Blood Covenant. And Ranger. I mean, the champions that we saw just now on Blood Run are still just as effective on Blood Covenant as well. In some cases, a bit more. Nyx on Blood Covenant is very dangerous. Ranger on Blood Covenant is unbelievably dangerous as well. Visor works. I mean, pretty much all three of them work really well on the map. Both maps. Indeed, but we should be finding out what this is going to be very, very soon. We'll be going into our champion select uh, quite swiftly, one map should be each. thinking this. This this will be our first two one of the day at the very least. because yeah. that's going to be uh, inevitable. The result both team, uh, both players, I should say, taking a map. So it's going to be two one no matter what happens here, um, which is always nice to see. Like I said, even on Sunday's games, despite some of the matches themselves going down to the absolute Incredible wire, it was still a lot of two zeros. We don't get to see so many two ones. There we go. It was blood coming in. Where was that? Now, immediately in with Ranger. Immediately in with Nix. Now, here we go. Proximo going in for the uh, Blaskovic pick again. Now, we're going to see, is Rainer going to stick with that team he rocked on that blood run? Visor immediately. Looking likely. We'll see who he goes with next. Yes, he does. I mean, all three champions. And, it, and again, the only exception here is that Proximo has gone for... Blaskovic um, instead of Ranger. Yes, Blaskovic instead of Ranger. I, th I think that's just because of... His accuracy was really strong, uh, like on the lightning gun particularly, which means that if he catches any of those three champions off guard with the dual wield, obviously they will just get deleted. And to be honest, I definitely feel like, um, I definitely feel like the ranger pick on Proximo was out of his three champions, potentially his weakest pick there as well. So it's no wonder to see him. That's almost like his switched champion. And I think going in with um, Blaskovic in the set, he's done much better with anyway. On Corrupted Keep, that really was his star champion. I'm not really surprised to see it again here. I, I think that's fair enough to say. I mean, we, already, we already saw him looking super good on this Blaskovic pick. So not a huge surprise to see him bring it back out again. Blood Covenant being a map that almost every single player so far is being like supremely comfortable on uh, overall. I mean, let's not forget, you know, this is a retro map, you know, sort of reading up for Quake Champions, but this is a layout that these guys are going to be used to playing if they've played Quake once or twice before. And even if you've been, in, you know, in part of this since like the very early stages of the beta, Blood Covenant was basically the first map that everyone really got access to. So if you're ready for one map in a 1v1 setting, it's probably going to be Blood Covenant. So I expect we'll see a good game regardless. Well, bear in mind as well, uh, now you can make custom games obviously um, in champions you can make a custom game yourself and just run around you can Three, practice movement two, now speaking of movement one. Nyx on Round this map one. is free to basically go wherever she wants Proximo immediately oh, with fantastic movement but does fumble his uh, wall jump either that or he was trying to get the heavy armor anyway but some really nice nails like you're trying to go for the heavy armor in the situation you want to secure those as soon as possible especially considering right now we can see he's already got over like, that mega health now, this is what Nyx is going to do a really good job of. Really sort of controlling that high ground. Does manage to sort of like keep him away with the rocket. Trying to almost head him off from behind. There we go, he's caught him. And just like that, this is why Nyx is so effective on Blood Covenant. Going completely around the back end. Rainier was not ready for that. Hang on, the aggressive ghost walk. We might see a frag here. Oh, just gets the heavy armor just in time. He's trying to juke it. Hang on a minute, he's doing so much damage with the rocket. And he can barely get away. Five HP. That was almost a disaster situation for Proximo. Outgunned through the machine gun, though. I believe that was machine guns, not nails, right? Yeah, definitely looked like a uh, regular machine gun there. Definitely. definitely wish, though. Has himself with a heavy machine gun. Except being somewhat uh, impactful in certain situations, but gets himself a big rocket there. But Proximo's got to be careful. He will get railed in one shot here. I think against the Nyx, as agile as this, Rainier is going to have to make sure that he is landing these rails as often as possible. You do not want to give her that room to run around, and if you rail her before she gets in, she's going to be forced to always play that defensive game. Hang on, going in with the LG. 
Not much health. Rainer very weak. And the rocket does it. Even a 16 damage rocket finishes that deal and has now forced him onto Visor already. Unfortunately, he was so close to the armor, you know, he was looking to pick those up, but Visor, not, not mean, not a huge surprise. Visor being very effective versus Nyx, that piercing sight, not letting her run away. But who says she wants to run away if she's got that advantage? And look how low he is. Actually, actually applies to both of them so far. Very weak. I mean, he's been able to get the heavy armor, but he's still unbelievably low on HP. He does have to Ghost Walk, though, so he can get away. The question is, is Reyna going to be popping his Piercing Sight in retaliation? Just see the speed of how fast Nyx controls this upper ground on Blood Covenant. If you've got those wall jumps on deck, you can get around quite quick. And all those key pickups, yeah, right? The rocket launcher, the rail, the heavy armor. Make a health. Quickly get between all of them if you've got the right movement. Yeah, you know, Proximo was listening out for that piercing sight. The second he heard it, he turned around immediately, knowing Rainer was behind him lying in wait. Speaking of which, piercing sight has ran out, so he hasn't seen him go for the ghost walk. Awesome. Nice shot. He's going to chase this one down. Walks Ooh. straight into a rocket, though. Eats a ton of damage for his troubles. But he's going to be able to pick up the mega health to keep himself nice and topped up, followed by some armor. So just like that, despite taking down so low from the rocket, instantly back to full resources. Definitely was not the end of the world, though. Getting hit by that rocket and going towards the mega health that was absolutely free for him. All it's really going to do is waste time. Both players respectable health and armor. Speaking of which, all armor. armor. Yeah, deleted by the rail. Oh, we can hear the piercing sight's been used. Rainer's looking for him. And he's heard him. Trying to be really fast with his movement, so it was actually going to be very hard to go for a predictive rocket. Well, yes, oh, yeah. It's a fully charged rail, though. 90 damage on that one. Just like that, Rainer's taking down super low. He's been forced to run. Expecting him around the corner, but not quite. But he is still very weak. Proximo with a little bit of armor left can afford to take just one rocket, maybe one rail. Rocket jump just to try and get that prediction where he's going to be. Oh, we can see him down. That rail misses, but it gives away his position completely. He's a rail in the bum. Can he follow it up? Oh, walks into another rail. But again, both players so weak, even though Proximo is the one that's on the chase with the exception of this mega health. At any point, if Rainier sort of caught him with one high damage rocket, Proximo was going to be in trouble. Heavy armor once again being secured by Proximo, making Rainer just that much more frustrated, I suppose, of dealing with a, well, one minute warning. All Proximo has to do now is stay alive one extra minute. With this one minute countdown, it's likely Rainer is only going to get one more use of piercing sight before that no longer becomes an issue because the cooldown is just too long. Here come the rails. If he can get this fight, he's going to make it way harder. If he can frag oh. Rainer here, it might be good, but hang on, he's stuck in the air. He needs to hit by one more rocket, misses the rail, and gets punished by Proximo's rail in return. And now, now that is something we see over and over and over again. When it comes down to that clutch final shot with the rail, if Proximo missed that, he would have been dead for sure. But getting it has given this two champion lead, and Rainer very low. This is going to be an almost impossible comeback. 20 seconds left to even things out, and very low on health. Rainer, no choice but to try and take that frag, and Proximo is going to make him suffer the consequences. Really wasn't much he could do there. You know, and also I uh, got stopwatch in between the rounds. That was pretty cool. Um, but I think there, was, there really wasn't much Rainer could do at that last minute. He had to push in. He had to try and make sure he could win that fight, get a frag on board, and then as soon as physically possible, try and even out the champion count. Because at that stage, it was very hard to come back. But Proximo now one round up. Both players going in for Nick's first now. I think Rainer needs to compete with not only the mobility, but the, the survivability. If you get caught in these catacombs down at the bottom or situation where you don't want to take a single rail and you're not free to it that goes well, for already seeing just how stable it can be if you've got nicks first and once again that nice wall jump i mean th this is what you pick her for right just be able to control up all catches are on the uh, jump pad and then swaps to the rail but oh but once again rainer almost no health surviving with yeah he's in big trouble now even with that health and armor bear in mind he's going to get access to the mega no doubt proximo now knows he's collected it Oh, hits him with a rail again. Rainier ready to return fire, but Proximo just seems to be the one on the hunt constantly. I think that's been the, the case of this entire map. Proximo has been so aggressive. He's very rarely given Rainier room to breathe. Very hard for Rainier to recover from this. Oh, nice rail good. read from Rainier that he's going to come around the corner. This is the follow-up rail. Oh, though, this is again. them both. He lets him, he lets him live. 
to the point they actually got heavy armor. Yeah. And it's now once again able to get on the aggressive. He's landing those rails when the health is plentiful, when he can afford to take them. But when the rail is guaranteed, he's missing them at the last moment so consistently. And man, easier said than done. Nyx, such a small target yeah. to hit. Very mobile, kind of all over the place. I believe Nyx actually does have, I think she has the smallest tip box in the game of any of the champions. You can see these sort of like cross map rails. It's a little bit more difficult on her. Health and armor very even. That will certainly change in four seconds when the mega health comes back. Proximo looking to be the closest to it. No doubt he's going to take yeah, that. Rainer nowhere near. Unfortunately for Rainer, heavy armor quite a way away from respawning itself. We see Proximo start to control them both. The prediction rockets. Proximo goes straight into it for taking minimal damage. Here comes him on the fight. They'll see the blue trail, knowing he's gone in for the uh, ghost walk. Heard the jump pad as well. The aggressive oh, ghost. Kill. Oh, oh, he misses the rail once again. That final snap two rail just isn't going to connect this time. He's heard the jump pad, though. He knows where he is. Gets caught on the jump pad, so he can't control his movement. Does not matter, though. Still gets a bunch of damage. Rainer forced to run and is getting away really effectively, actually. Didn't take a single rail escaping there. Normally, yeah, would take the mega health, though, even though he missed the kill. Still controlling these power ups. And again, Rainer, no health left at all. He's predicting he's going to try and pick these up, and he gets right on that read. And Proximo finds himself with the first blood of the second round. Really good for him that he was actually finally able to finish it, too. Consistently was landing those rails, and both players getting away with just a slither of health left. But not this time. That rocket out just covers tracks, trading rail for rail, but you know. Proximo just doesn't have that health to tank it. I think he knows that too. Trying to almost head him off while at the same time he's going to have access to the armor. Yeah, he would have had the jump pad. You saw Rainier turn around there. But at the same time, you saw Proximo go for the jump pad and actually completely retreat backwards. Doesn't want to take any of that sort of predictive rockets. Especially when you hear a jump pad, you know kind of roughly how long it's going to take for them to land, where they're roughly going to land. So yeah, Proximo, you see him sort of crawling around, crouching down, trying not to be too loud with his footsteps. Doesn't want to give away his position too obviously. Especially when Rainier, we can see he is fully stacked on health. He just picked up the mega health as well and armor. Very healthy boy. Well, oh, that was a really nice rail. Being really aggressive, actually. With 17 health, can't take a huge amount. Can he get him before? No, he can't. And eats a rail for his troubles. I was just about to say, when Proxima has the champion lead, he tends to play very passively. To the point where when the one minute warning happens, he almost plays on the potential impatientness of Rainer. But at that last minute, Conflict is going to go in. But unfortunately, he's getting punished big time. Rainer as well. He's in big trouble. He has barely armor or health left. Yeah, plenty of pickups around as well for Rainer, including the mega health that he is going to secure with ease. 50 seconds left on this round alone. Proximo looking like a severe disadvantage at the moment. 45 seconds. And it's going to come down to one champion to do it. Now, sometimes you will see both players be very passive here. And they'll almost wait out that sudden death and play that one champion game. Or right now, when there's 30 seconds left, they try and take the other off guard, you know, and catch that champion unexpectedly. Speaking of which, Proximo actually cannot afford to take a single rail. Very fortunate for that one missed, because that would have been it. Indeed, 15 seconds remaining before sudden death is procced. But at the moment, Reyna looks like he's in the complete driver's seat. Going to pick up this heavy armor as well. We can see Proximo is nowhere near to contest it. So another free pickup going the way of Reyna. Oh, however, though, two rails will say otherwise. Proximo would get enough help, just evened out. Yeah, those rails did a good job of just kind of undoing the heavy armor that Reyna just collected. And once again, we're in sudden death, so it's going to be one champion to take this round. Proximo on the verge of going up one round again. Match point against Reyna if he wins this round. Reyna, though, really needs it. And there's the read right. Does he teleport? Does he not? All oh, the lightning gun. Oh. So slightly outranged. Did he go for the dual wield there? Yes, he did. He tried going in for the dual wield, almost like on reaction to the teleport to catch him as he re-emerges, but he got no damage. And now it's going to be a long time before Blaskovic has that again. Oh, okay, that teleporter. Nobody to save him though. Quite low. Right there, able to get away. Die orb up any second now too. Now the mega health just got taken by Proximo, so. Eight seconds left on that heavy armor. I wonder if the uh, Ray is actually going to try and fight for it or whether he's going to let it rock. Oh, that one's going to connect. Oh, second one will not. Third one will. Yep, he has Again, to get out. Trading shot for shot. Rainer once again finds himself low on health. But look how fast Proximo's going as well. He was going for the chase, but 
Just a bit too far away, I think. Hang on, he's caught him. There he goes in for the tire roll. Can he finish on this? Very bold decision. Oh, the rails, they, they keep missing. Proximo is so weak. 20 seconds on that Mega Health as well. Proximo has nowhere to run, but oh, he's fighting the rail. back. Oh, he's gone in for the dual wield, but I think using it just almost defensively as he retreats. Rain there again, missing those crucial last minute shots and Proximo just like that. Stacked back up again. He may kick himself if he loses this round because of that. But let's not forget, this is sudden death. Oh, and he not only misses the follow-up, but Proximo is quicker on the draw and rails him straight in the face. In that round back, Proximo 2-0 up on that kind of play when he was almost guaranteed dead. He was just, just faster. Proximo on match point. I mean, like we were just saying, this could be a very, this is no doubt. I know speak of the obvious, but a very important round for both players. The final round, potentially Rainer going back in for Ranger for his first pick. Once again, though, you can see how important it is to have that, the armor up, especially when Rainer is hitting as many rails as he is. Although the more sort of like stressful, I think the more pressure that starts to add up in these rounds, the less rails he is hitting. Still being careful. I mean, he heard the jump pad get used, but that doesn't necessarily mean that Rainier's going to commit. He could have easily have just jumped back down there. Might get health up, though. So Proximo's going to be able to pick that up. Yeah, Rainier sees him take it. Hits a rail, but Mega health is going to sponge all of it. Well, the dangerous thing here is that Proximo does not actually have his rail yet. So at that range, he's not going to be able to fight back. Rainier has that advantage from far distances, catches him. And before he goes in for the Ghost Walk, still takes the damage anyway. 50 HP, and that's not going to be enough to survive anything. Anything substantial, I should say. Oh, that rocket's going to connect, though. Doesn't have the Ghost Walk to save himself. At this stage, heavy armor and mega health both spawn. Catches him going for it, but just how fast he's going. That's a free pickup, regardless of rail or not. Rainer's looking to sort of maybe... Okay, there we go. Now he's got himself a rail. Oh, I'll do so for a minute and a half without it, but it's still going to connect. Mega health. It's going to wave rain in. It's a very slippery game plan that we're seeing Proximo go for. Hang on, he actually missed the rail, so he's a bit subjective to that free damage, but again, has the ghost walk available. Using it to try and get out of there. Oh, 72. Oh, oh the rail leaves him with two life, but heavy armor is there to save the day. That is the that is just when you have just slightly above the health required, surviving with that little bit of life left. When it's a rail you've tanked, it doesn't matter. Precise. Oh, oh my lord, precise direct rocket from that range. Proximo with that read and Rainer knocked off his Ranger again. It did take two minutes for that to happen though, so clock's starting to work against Rainer now, but does have his visor. Well, we have seen Proximo when he knows he's one champion up. His game plan becomes a lot more slow. Like just not really overextending too much, really not giving Rainer any signs of where he is when he hasn't got piercing sight activated. And he really plays on that clock. He plays on the pressure that just builds up. If you are one champion down or sometimes two, smells blood though, catch up for the chase. Going in for the LG, it's not gonna be enough. You can see him trying everything he can to get away though, but I mean, it's next. You're trying to run away from someone that is just so fast, picking up every health on the way, but it is not enough. Rainer tried to fight back at the end, but it was too little, too late. And there we go, down to this next, this lone champion standing in between Proximo winning and Rainer making this, or starting this comeback, I should say, because even if he wins this round, he still has to get three in a row. It's definitely a big ask. Oh, we heard the jump pad, but obviously she was in ghost mode, so we can't see Rainer looking to use it aggressively. However, didn't really get a huge amount off it, but now catches a rocket, catches two! Tries to go invisible for the third hit, but doesn't need it. Proximo moves on in the bracket for week two. Now, that was quite a back and forth game between them, though. I mean, let's not forget that first map, very one-sided in the way of Proximo. Second one looking to be the start of a, the same thing for Rainier, but Proximo started a comeback, brought it down to the absolute wire in the final round of map two, but ultimately lost, but was clearly able to compose himself, keep himself together, and command Blood Covenant for that third map. So he's going to be moving on today. Uh, well played to Rainer. Hopefully we'll see him again over the next couple of weeks. But for now, it will be Proximo that will be advancing through today's bracket. Well played.
I think it just shows that Nyx is really effective on Blood Covenant as well. I mean, having her first is such a tried and tested strategy because she navigates really easily uh, in those bad situations. She kind of has that ghost walk to get away if she needs it. But ultimately, I think, you know, we expected to see really good play from Proximo, and I think he definitely delivered on that. So we're going to get our next match underway. We're moving on swiftly in this 500-man bracket, and we're going to be getting our next match underway. Until that time, we're going to go for a quick break while we prepare that match. Don't go anywhere because the Quake World Championship We'll continue after this.